여러분들은 안녕하십니까? 네, 안녕하세요. So, it is a true honor and pleasure to greet all of you again. And uh, as I was coming here, I noticed that life is getting faster. Those who were sitting in the car, they can testify that life was getting real fast. But it's not just in the car, not just on the KTX, not just on the Chonchol, which becomes Gosok Chonchol, the express subway. We have internet connections that are getting faster, we have computers that are getting faster, and we have problems that appear faster. Do the solutions appear faster? Yeah. After all, what is the direction of this fast, fast action? If we look how quickly the problems appear and how slowly the solutions, we can see one thing soon or later. That this speed is going around, around, around. KTX very, very quickly from Seoul to Busan, Busan to Seoul, back. Internet, quickly upload, quickly download. With the car quickly left, quickly right. But what really happens during that time? I mean, how fast was the Buddha teaching? What was the speed? When you practice, how fast do you meditate? Because of this speed idea, many people ask, can I get enlightenment fast? We have other ideas in today's society. Efficiency, for instance. And efficiency many times means that you spend very little money, but you get a lot. That's efficiency. Or you spend very, very little time, but you get a lot of time. That's efficiency. But if you look into your heart, can you efficiently love? Can you have an efficient relationship with another human being? Do you educate your children efficiently? So you see that most of the fast actions go around, 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 all in one circle. And efficiency always has a fine print showing you what you still have to spend, the energy you still have to put into that. So it seems very efficient first, but later on you see, ah, not complete, not complete. Fast food seems very efficient, but you remain hungry. So once we see the true nature of faster, cheaper, and the third one, better, these three ideas are very significant of today's society. Faster, cheaper, better. Then we see something really fundamental and deep. Because the third idea, better, shows the nature of our thinking very well. So you have a camera, and that camera is very slow, so it's very uncomfortable. So if you get a faster camera, we say it's better. But can you upgrade or get a better wife or husband, a better son or daughter? a better friend? How does that work? Some people in the West think like that. Every three years I upgrade my car, every ten years I upgrade my spouse. That's not so human. These ideas, if they control us, we lose our human nature. First we have to see how this works. How this one hang on, this around around action, doesn't really mean progress. It means speed, but it doesn't mean progress. That's really important to see. Efficiency means maybe concentration, but it doesn't mean you can spare the homework. The homework is something you have to do. So efficiency means also you have to do things completely. It seems there is no way out of this. There are 7 billion people on this planet. So we have to do things faster and faster, better and better, more and more efficiently. And personally, I have no problem with this. I like KTX. I like a good car. It's good if things are not so expensive. It's very good. One thing is important. Do not confuse this with your own path. When you ask this question, what is this? There is no speed. There is no efficiency. You just ask the question, return to this moment, and all these ideas disappear. That's the mind which is beyond time and space. So what can we do with this world which is getting crazier and crazier? You can try to help those people whose minds are relatively open, but what can you do with the rest? First of all, be patient. That already helps those people who have the fast sickness, the sickness of being always fast and fast and fast. Next, be tolerant. That fixes the efficiency sickness. Because efficiency implies a lot of intolerance and impatience because if you make a mistake that means you are not efficient so if you're efficient 
No mistake. That means you're not always tolerant. And the third is acceptance. Because when you always want things better and better and better and better, that means you do not accept what was bad or worse or unacceptable. Patience, tolerance, acceptance. How can we exercise that? We have to come back to the mind which is not moving. <coughs> Uh, this mind has wonderful Chinese names, and I want to mention two of them. One is Mu Wei, that literally means non-action. But it doesn't mean you become lazy. Mind action is actually dualistic action in this case. So that means do not make good and bad. Do not react. Do not react out of dualistic mind. And the second is Mu Nyom, which is don't know mind, or non-conceptual mind. So these are two very important characteristics of our true nature. And out of this, you can be tolerant, you can be patient, and you can accept things that normally you would not. So those people who only follow the faster, better, cheaper, or more efficient way, soon they will frustrate themselves and others. And then when they have a problem, they, have, they need somebody who can help, and that can be you and wait until they are ready and open to listen to you. When are they ready to listen to you? When they are suffering. Suffering opens the mind. It's very sad that we have to suffer for that. But that's why Buddha said life is suffering. He didn't paint things worse or better. He just said what life is. It's faster, cheaper, better kind of people, after a while, they become exhausted. You lose energy then what's wrong? Life doesn't work in the way I think it should. Something's wrong. What's that? Then they are ready to listen. Not before. So those of you, that means all of you here, who already understand this, what do you need to do? Just increase your practice energy. Increase your potential. Increase your munyam and muwi. And be patient. So then what will the world do? What will happen in the world? The world will get faster and better and more and more efficient until the systems break and people hit the wall. Not before. It doesn't stop before a crisis. Personal, group, whole society works the same way. We don't stop before the crisis. So none of your effort is wasted. It's like a seed which goes into the ground and waits for the sunshine and the rain. So I think, seeing your eyes and your faces, everybody understands this, and that's wonderful. And now, in order to deepen this understanding, if you have any questions, I will be doing my best to try and answer them. I have a lot of thoughts in my mind. I feel very depressed. I obsessed with uh, uh, writing everything what happened today. Uh, I uh, tend to write everything to stress out. What I ask, what am I going to do? I think my karma is very thick to break my karma. Once uh, an hour a day I bow, an hour of chanting, an hour of sitting. That kind of practice is enough. I'm always trying to practice, but uh, mm, taking action is not that easy. This problem is so heavy that I cannot help you. <laughs> so I ask for the help of non-human beings. I have many helpers because I don't have so much power, so I need a lot of helpers. So my first helper to you, free, it's free, is the birds. Do the birds keep a diary? <laughs> Do they use a navigation system to go from north, south, east, west? Learn from the birds, that's number one. My next helper for you is the dog. There are wonderful dogs or cats in temples. Do you know how many hours they go for Yebul? 24. And they never enter the pop town. Why? Because they don't think. They have thought processes, but not in the way we do. We are human beings, so we have human problems. But you cannot put fire out with gasoline. So you can practice two hours, three hours, sitting, bowing, chanting, but if you do not want to stop your thinking, none of that will work. 
So first you should really sincerely decide that you want to go beyond this level of constant circular or cyclic action, speech and thinking. It's one hang on, very quick. But if you don't decide that you want to go beyond it, there will be nothing that can help you and no one. One correct decision and you already broke the lock of your karma. One correct decision. And the name of that correct decision is enough. So how much diary is enough? How much internet is enough? How much thinking is enough? This is food for the mind after which you will always be hungry. Always. But the mind food of the Buddhas and the patriarchs, that's something that doesn't leave you hungry. This mind food of the Buddhas and the patriarchs, that's complete. We call that don't know. How do you get there? You ask this question, what am I? Or what is this? Because I is already an idea. But most of us feel uncomfortable without that. We are used to it so much. What would I be without I? Oh my God. You would be just fine. Only your ego would be missing. If you have the courage, ask the question, what is this? What is this that sees with your eyes, hears with your ears, smells with your nose, thinks with your brain? What's that? And I will not, not tell you the answer. And trust me, in this room, nobody will. Because it has to be your experience. Mm -hmm. If you practice, and you're in a wonderful and suitable place to practice, with great monks and wonderful shindanim, to practice together this don't know mind. If you practice that, you will cure yourself from these sicknesses. Yes. You're welcome. More questions? I need it some courage to ask yeah. you this question. Sinim uh, often says that uh, uh, we have to return to our true nature. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about true nature. My name is Kim Toga. Mm -hmm. Returning to true self, uh, does it mean that uh, are there any special uh, thing concrete? When I practice uh, from time to time, it's very rare though, but I feel very elevated. Is that my true nature, or are there uh, something concrete or specified uh, thing? What also, is true nature? Your true nature begins like this. You grab uh, this, and you burn that paper. Yeah. You burn that paper that's in your hand. That's how it begins. My heart breaks for you. Why? Because you are so sincere. But you try to practice with thinking. How do you want to attain this point by thinking? You cannot. Burn the paper. Still thinking, burn your books. Come back to the cushion and with one step, you can just have great faith, great question, great courage. If that paper was helpful, I would answer you by putting two more papers into that pile. I would give you so much thinking you could swim in it, but I don't. I even take away what you have. I'm very bad. I take away your thinking. Why? <laughs> you already understand, okay? said, understanding cannot help you. I was fighting this so long. I hated that sentence. What does it mean understanding cannot help you? I understand you right now. What do, why do you say that? Because our understanding is very limited. That's what he said. It's like a fishing net. If you are clever, you know how to fish, and you can catch fish from the sea. But you cannot fish out the sea. That's how limited thinking is. That's why. Put down the fishing net. Don't want the fish. Don't run after the bone like a dog. So don't try to fish. Don't have the net. Jump into the sea. That's don't know. That's no thinking. So putting down your fishing net, not desiring for the fish, that means burn that paper. Then you jump into the sea. That means you come here, practice don't know. Only don't know. You make that one step, this really courageous, faithful one step, not to rely on your thinking, then the whole world will help you. Don't trust my speech. Trust yourself. Then it works. Then what is it? 
did I uh, from obsessed Chega. with uh, the desire to taste? Then Sinim thinks that uh, I have been indulged into my thoughts. Of course, everybody does. <laughs> it's not a <laughs> sin. Come on, we are not some other pl no, religious place. It's not a sin to think, but it doesn't lead you where you want to go. That's all. You know? So if you have a wooden key and a metal key, and only the metal key opens the door, which one do you use? Thinking is not a sin. Feeling is not a sin. Without that, we would not be human. But if we identify with that, we lose our way. If we perceive them and take them for what they are, we can wake up. Then your thinking and your feelings can help you. If you have a dog and you train the dog, the dog serves you. If you don't train the dog and the dog becomes nasty, then you serve the dog. That's why training is so important. This is a good training place for this dog inside your mind. The human body consists of muscles, blood, and the bones. The elements consist of human body. To incite a human body, you feel emptiness in it. According to cause and effect theory, we have a human body as a whole. Why is the human body like this? You know, it's the monkey's problem. The monkeys developed into humans, we say that. Some people still believe that. So the monkeys had a mutation, and the mutated DNA became human, and the pure monkey DNA remained monkey. Now, this is like children's toy, like play in the kindergarten. Because it only talks about the object. The object is the body. What is the subject? What is the mind? So, you ask, why is human body like this? Yeah. I ask, why did you get this body? Why? Why into human body and not bird or dog, god or devil? Why? You have human mind, you get human body. So, if you have different mind than human, you don't get human body. You have no mind, no eye, no physical body. I think that goes a little deeper. Human body is like this because of our DNA. That's not so important. But why we took this human body? And why this one? Look at your face in the mirror. Why this face? Why this body? What kind of karma? That's important. Mm. So your eyes are Asian. My eyes are European. My nose is big and white. Your nose is a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the difference is between Asian and European DNA. Mm. But that's not so important. But why you got Asian and why I got European? You know how many times I was thinking about that? Ah, oh, terrible. Mm -hmm. so everybody in this room already understands. Our direction is determined by our choices and our karma. Mm -hmm. Karma is not your destiny. If you don't see it, it's your destiny. If you see it, it's your conscious choice. I give you a little image like a movie clip. Okay. You have a boomerang. You know what that is. Mm -hmm. You throw it away, it comes back to you. <laughs> it's really like your karma. You throw it away, it comes back to you. Small boomerang, you throw it away, maybe 30 seconds, come back. You have a big boomerang, super boomerang, you throw it away, comes back one hour. Wow, one hour. Even bigger boomerang, comes back one lifetime. But when it's more than one lifetime, we have a little problem. Even within one lifetime, we can have the same problem, which is we don't see cause and effect continuously. So, in Korea, you have these big apartment buildings. Some of them 15 stories tall, some of them 20. In Busan, even 50 stories, very tall. So then, you throw your boomerang, goes around the block and appears again. So you don't see it while it's blocked by the apartment. You don't see it, but you know, you throw it, disappear, reappear, come back. Yeah. But if so the building is very it. wide, and you throw away your boomerang, you forget. It's all behind, 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 behind the building. And then suddenly something appears. Oh, 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 what happened? <laughs> I didn't do this, what happened? <laughs> then you look at it, oh, that's my fingerprint on it. So then you recognize. It was your karma all the way along. For the most part, you didn't see it. So how big is that block? One hour? 
10 hours, 10 years, 10 lifetimes, how big is our ignorance? That's the question. Completely see your boomerang. Completely see your karma. How can you do that? You return to this moment, the center of the circle. This moment. Remember the Diamond Sutra? Diamond Sutra says, past mind, present mind, future mind cannot get enlightenment. What does that really mean? That means that the mind which is broken into past, present and future, that cannot see clearly, because it's broken into past, present and future. And if you return to this moment, past, present, future all disappear. Then you practice this moment more and more, then you perceive that the past, present and future are in this moment, not separate from it. But if you think, if you try to understand, you will never get it. Completely put down all thinking, all diaries, worries, human body, not human body, completely put it down, come back to the moment, then past, present appear in their true nature. Then you perceive your karma, you perceive why you got human body. This moment mind is like infinite time, infinite space, clear like a mirror. So... First of all, I would like to sincerely appreciate Dr. Konstantin's wonderful, wide open mind and generosity that I could come here again. Mm -hmm. Also, the mm -hmm. indispensable and very necessary help of, help of Bogak Sunims, you know, with all the suing and other aspects of daily life here. Mm -hmm. And uh, most importantly, your effort as a Sangha together. Without that effort, our job has no meaning. Don't worry, we could be sitting in a togul and look only at the taramji coming back and forth, these little squirrels, okay? We could do that. That would be no problem. But with your faith, with your courage, with your deep question, our practice has deep meaning. Don't lose that question. Don't lose that courage. And then based on your experience of practicing together, you can develop great faith. This faith is not some belief superstition or some idea. This is based on experience. But this experience is not something that your eyes could see, ears could hear, or your mind could think, or your nose could smell. It's not like that. That has no name and no form. And just like the Heart Sutra says, no eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no realm of eyes, no realm of mind consciousness. It's not in this realm. But we can still attain that. We can still attain that. That means we go beyond the constant one hang long, the constant circular cyclic action. We go beyond that. So soon there will be Hango, the summer culture beginning. In Hungary, one Kwangsa, we have the beginning of the summer Begil Kido, while we are cultivating our garden during the daily hours. We have the Kido as our practice. And in our minds, we are already practicing together. I feel that this is our privilege to have the Buddha's bridge extending far and wide in this world. Mm -hmm. And if we make our effort very clearly and patiently, compassionately and with tolerance moment to moment, then we can all wake up and save all sentient beings from suffering. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you.